know, I just like playing with balloons and people think I'm good at it. I don't know. But um, uh, we're building spaceships. Oh, um, cool. My spaceship uses approximately 2,500 balloons. And uh, it's, uh, I ordered a total of 15,000 balloons for this sculpture. That's over $2,000 worth of just balloons. Um, we're going to, I and my team, we're all going to put it together. Um, there's seven of us, eight of us. There's eight of us. And uh -huh. we're going to put this all together by Saturday morning. Uh, where then we will, no matter what level of exhaustion we are, we'll stand and twist balloons for the public from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. roughly. And uh, I have some of the most amazing visionary balloon artists I've ever met. Um, why did they call me Dizzy Doc? Um, well, Doc became a nickname. And just kind of a, I, I, I love, I love the human body, anatomy, the healing process, everything about that. And I was always fixing up my friends. I had some accident-prone friends over the years, and they always said, thanks, Doc, when I would put a Band-Aid on them or something and make sure they had taken care of their bodies and things. So Doc became my nickname amongst my friends. And when I became a balloon artist, it became, uh, uh, Doc was my performance name. And kid, I used to mouth inflate my mouth all my balloons and the children started calling me Mr. Dizzy or Mr. Dizzy Doc and that is how I became Dizzy Doc and I discovered balloons at an interesting time in my life. I was uh, in my early 20s and I had hundreds of jobs, literally hundreds of jobs. Every week I was applying somewhere else, filling out that application. I had everything memorized on filling out an application because I couldn't find what I wanted. Every job that I had, I would last a while and be bored with it. It was, uh, I'm ADHD, and it was just hard to follow direction and do what I was supposed to do. So um, I uh, just started playing around. I had a friend that wanted to be a clown. So she took me to clown classes with her, and uh, they taught me some balloon animals, and I learned how to be a clown. And I remember seeing balloons that use more than one balloon in a sculpture. Uh, instead of a dog, I saw like parrots and multiple colored flowers and things like that in New Orleans years before this. And I remembered that it was possible to do something really nice with a balloon. So uh, the dogs were kind of boring. So I kept trying to remember those things I saw years before and kept pushing myself to be able to make something as beautiful as my memory uh, said it was. And then uh, I got noticed for all the unique things that I made and started teaching balloons. And that's when I started actually really learning how to do balloons is because I learned so much more by teaching from everybody's mistakes or everybody's questions that made me learn more. And I just kept pushing my own limitations. Balloon artists who blow up balloons by mouth. There's a lot of dangers involved in that. Um, and nothing's really exactly proven, but a lot of the balloon artists that I have known over the years uh, have eye issues. I got a hernia from blowing up balloons. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of pressure in your body. And I used to spend six and eight hours at a time inflating balloons by mouth, uh, twisting for the public. And the public doesn't realize how much energy that takes out of a person. I mean, it is a lot of energy to twist balloons for lines of people. And I used to do it all by mouth. And I would be exhausted. I would get home and get in my Epsom salt soak. And, and uh, I have to get massages weekly. I have a couple different massage chairs because it just really takes its toll on the body um, to be a balloon artist. And, uh, but since I've been using a pump to blow up my balloons, it still takes its toll energy-wise and physically, but um, I have a lot more energy and uh, I feel a lot better uh, that I haven't been using mouth inflation. Oh, okay. So. Perfect.